if as we believe that our true essence, right, is of the divine itself, of divine love, what blocks us? And yet we, we have these experiences where we're tuned in, where we're, we are available to love and open-heartedness, and other times not so much. And what is it? What's the difference, do you suppose? I, have, I mean, I have an answer, but. Again, turning to um, this wonderful teaching, and I've shared it with you before, that I learned from Tara Brock, I think it, it's, it surprises the, 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 what I'm asking in a beautiful way. Again, from um, that teaching of the Golden Buddha that was covered over with clay in Southeast Asia for hundreds of years until uh, it started to crack and the monks that were taking care of it started to see gold reflecting out of it and started to gently break through the cracks. And sure enough, it was a pure golden Buddha that had been covered over with clay as a way to protect it from invading forces. And so she says this, that the golden Buddha had survived wars and invasions through the protective clay covering, much in the same way that we cover our own innate goodness and purity of heart to survive. The social, societal, and relational difficulties of our human experience and culture. The suffering need not come from the covering. The fact that we have an egoic covering is just part of being human. The suffering comes from our forgetting who we really are and instead getting identified with that covering, becoming the striving self, the overly ambitious or the defended self or the addictive self. We forget who's looking through the covering that loving, open-kinded, open-hearted, kind person that we really are behind the covering. There's that consciousness and a pure heart. And that is part of what mindfulness and meditation can connect us to. It can begin to, uh, we have some uh, room to uh, witness the coverings, right? To witness some of the ways that we protect ourselves or armor up. And to recognize that that's not all that we are. There's, there's something within us that witnesses that, that even might have some judgment about that. And so to connect with the fullness of our experience and this loving-kindness meditation practice does so in a way, and mindfulness in general, the key element of it is to not be judgeful, to not be in judgment about our experience, to just notice it, and actually to cultivate some compassion for ourselves, for that experience. Because even when we realize our coverings and how they work out, how they play out, ways in which we might protect ourselves or block ourselves from being loving and compassionate with ourselves and others. Even when we know it, they're still going to play out. But now we see them for what they are. And we can have some compassion around, wow, I'm I'm feeling vulnerable. I look at me, look at me trying to protect myself or look at me trying to judge you or look at me looking back in the past and trying to re just being aware of it. There's so much in our current way of life and I think this has been, you know, I feel like I'm my parents and my grandparents when I say that. This world is just going to hell. <laughs> and you kids and your fast cars and your loud music. Uh, you know, but there's so much to distract us, so much. And we get caught in the doing, 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 doing. And when we get, sometimes when we get still, when we get quiet, it's uncomfortable because we have been so avoidant of connecting with ourselves and what's alive there. And it's, our mind is really tuned into all the distractions. So we have to really cultivate a practice that brings a, us to a presence 
right? To be present to what is. And that's the other thing that starts to happen in what is. We don't like it, right? It's, it's, it's boring, or it's the same old, or it's whatever it is. It's not enough. But really, in the present moment, that is where life is happening. We know this. We know this. So mindfulness, as I understand it, these practices offer us an entry point into awareness that shows us, first of all, the complexity that we are, all that's going on in us, my goodness. And to then to attend to it a little bit, to notice it. Sometimes just noticing it will go away. Sometimes you might tap into something that needs your attention, that needs some love and compassion. Sometimes you might tap into something that you need to work on in terms of really, I'm, t- I'm speaking with you, that we need to work on to release in, in, in a forgiveness practice or something like that. So the, the bottom line of that, of that story is that this perception of goodness can undo the blocks to loving. When we start to tune in to the goodness, which is what we're going to do with this loving kindness practice, to tune in to our capacity to love, to our capacity to be present, it starts to undo some of that blocking. And we have, as many of you already know, this uh, our, our brain has this negativity bias, our survival brain, that we so easily remember the bad stuff, and the good stuff is like Teflon, and the, the bad stuff is like Velcro, right? You remember that stuff, but the good stuff we don't remember as well. So to, to consciously cultivate an attitude that begins to look for the goodness in ourself and in life and in each other, As Tara Brock concludes, and I think I've been alluding to, we've been working on through many of our series, just recognizing the evolution of consciousness that we are participating in and how it is ripe, right? She says that we are now at the point in our evolution that we can consciously facilitate our evolution. We are learning about the functions and limits of our reptilian brain as well as the compassion and cooperative impulses of the most recently evolved part of our brain, which is also what we're hearing about that science is saying we are actually um, built for spirituality. We're hardwired for connection and for connecting with spirit, the divine, whatever you call it. We recognize that as part of ourselves. And so when we don't fulfill that when we don't have that connection, we suffer. And that's a lot of what we're seeing in our world. You probably know that for yourself. I do. Times when I'm just disconnected and thinking it's all, I gotta do it all and I gotta be it all and forgetting that I'm part of this living system and that I'm an expression of a living, loving spirit. Can I relate to that behind all my coverings? So that's what I'm hoping to bring to life for you today. And I think that all forms of prayer and meditation are really purpose ways that we can purposefully facilitate and cultivate that connection and deepen our awareness of that. And so I absolutely hope and trust and know that many of you already have a practice and stick with it. I'm not suggesting do this one or else. Um, but I also know that the, the, the power of doing it in community, and your song kind of alluded to it, you know, we can't do it alone. And so there is a power in coming into community. As you know, you're here mostly every Sunday um, for that. I mean, there's a part of that that brings you here. And when we connect energetically, it, the impact is felt. And so if you're feeling maybe not so Hi, you you can be lifted up a little in the energy that we create here together. And it also, I think, it's a healing balm to, to join in consciousness and to recognize that we are experiencing the ups and the downs, the goods and the bads of this life. That you, sometimes we can feel so isolated, particularly when it's hard, 
right? You feel like we're the only one and something's wrong with us. Why is it so hard for us? And so to just have experiences where we're calling upon how challenging that can be and holding a consciousness that also knows the goodness of life, the strength that we have, the goodness of God within us and all around us. And so cultivating that together, my hope is that it will be um, an uplifting one and inspire you to continue to do that on your own. So just a quick, I wanna say this, that um, I have Diana Dunbar scheduled to be with you next Sunday, who has been teaching tools of mindfulness at the corporate level for over 20 years, as well as a personal coach. And so I'm gonna leave the mechanics, some of the mechanics of mindfulness to her for next Sunday, and that's why I've chosen to really dive into um, the loving kindness practice that I'm a little more familiar with. But I want to share the definition, just a definition of what we're talking about when we talk about mindfulness practices that was set forth by John Kabat-Zinn, which is really, you know, they're teaching mindfulness in schools, in prisons, in, the, in your doctor's office. And so it's in and of itself not necessarily affiliated with any faith tradition, although it is a key element of the Buddhist practice. And so John Kabat-Zinn, who developed... Uh, who was actually a physician who developed this program for um, sort of a a non-faith-based approach to mindfulness, described it as this. This is his definition. Mindfulness is awareness cultivated by paying attention in a sustained and particular way, on purpose, in the present moment, and non-judgmentally. So just cultivating awareness that is focused on what is right now all that that is, without judging it. Oh, is that all? (laughs) Yes. And so let's take a moment right now to just take a breath, to check in with yourself. (sighs) Ah, The chair supporting you, this is a safe space. If you're comfortable, I encourage you to close your eyes and just take a moment to let your breath catch your attention. Drawing you inward, and also just sensing your experience, right? Sensing the air on your skin, perhaps the presence of someone next to you. Just becoming physically available to your full experience. And there's no right or wrong way to do that. And our breath is such a powerful tool So we feel that breath going in our body, through our nostrils, filling up our lungs. Begin to notice our experience of that, how easy or how hard it is for our mind to just connect with that. And just let that be with the invitation to just let your awareness capture all that is available through your senses. How you're feeling, how your physical body feels, scanning that for any tension. And taking a breath into that area. And how it may feel uncomfortable, maybe feels unnatural. Just take a breath. There's nothing in this moment that you have to do or respond to. We're just observing. And it doesn't take long for our mind to begin to have an opinion about it. So just let that be. That's fine. That's what it does. Connect with that place 
behind that that's, that's witnessing that. And just notice with, with great love and compassion, you know, any, any judgment that's coming up. This is, this is dumb or you can't do it or just notice that. And notice also all that is alive in you. Right? Between your thoughts and your feelings, your physical body. There's a full range of experience happening right now. So however that was for you, let that be. Taking a deep breath and returning to this time and space. And that really is just a little glimpse. And what it does for me every time is just reminds me of how I'm not present sometimes. I'm just an autopilot, right? Or I'm all in my head and there's life happening right here. So the opportunity is to tune in to life that's happening. And that means tuning in to the good, bad, and the ugly, the boring, the wonderful, and the challenging. And it is that gold within us that we continue to uncover when we do this and other practices. And it is that gold that our true essence, our Christ nature, if you will, that shines through when we, when we begin to uncover what covers us, what blocks us. And so we'll take a little more time to, to move more purposefully into a, a, a loving kindness practice here. Just so you know, you're not wasting your time, I will tell you this, that the benefits, studies show this, the benefits of mindfulness on both physical and mental health, in particular, loving kindness practices, overall increase in mental health and physical well-being, increased positive emotions and decreases negative emotions, increases feelings of social connection, activates empathy and compassion, slows biological aging, makes you sleep better. I mean, come on, giving you some good stuff here. Makes you more apt to be a helpful person, decreasing, decreases your biases towards others and curbs self-criticism. Amen, right? And the other thing is it works in small doses. So any attempt, and this is I think important for those of you who might be new to this or my, our meditation in general, any attempt to do this, helps. So even though you think, oh, I'm not doing it right, or I, I don't like it, or I get too fidgety, any attempt to connect with an intention of really connecting makes a difference. And it's a practice. So the more you do it, the easier it becomes. And some days are harder than others, right? But we continue with the practice. So know that your attempts to do this today with me here and your attempts, as you already know, I'm sure, through your practices, make a difference. Even if in the moment you might feel like, ugh, I didn't do that quite right, or why wasn't that as good as yesterday? So again, just take a deep breath. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to ring our singing bowl, which is tuned to our heart chakra. So this is just a sound, an invitation to, again, drop into our heart as we begin to work with our connection with love and kindness. So hear this sound as that invitation to drop into your heart. And just take a deep breath again, focusing on the energy, the space of your heart. And 
in that space, I invite you to bring to mind a, a person or a being, it could be a pet, for whom you have great love. And it's uncomplicated love. You know, that you can ooh, immediately connect with your sense of love and appreciation for this person or this being. And let yourself really feel the fullness of that connection, seeing them in your mind's eye, sensing their energy, and sensing your love for them, your open-heartedness, your warmth towards them. You might even make that connection expressing that inwardly, letting them know you love them. feeling their love radiating back toward you. And from that place of connection, of love, of open-heartedness, without judgment, just turn to your relationship with yourself. How are you related to yourself with love, with tolerance, with compassion. And notice if there's something that's blocking that. Just notice what comes up. No judgment, don't have to do anything with it. If there's something that blocks you from holding yourself with the compassion and love that you just held this other. And you can take that as valuable information to work with going forward as an area to set an intention to connect with yourself with greater love and kindness. And breathe into the fullness of your heart, connecting with the truest aspiration that we all have, our heart's deepest longing to know greater love and kindness. and to be able to express it more fully. Just connect with your desire. Sensing your intention to behold the goodness in yourself and others. And can you sense that despite anything that may block or distract you, that there is within you that deep aspiration and you seek to realize it more fully? That is your innate goodness, your gold shining through. And so trust that, trust your heart's goodness. Trust your capacity to remember that goodness. And now put yourself in the flow of that love that you radiated for that person or that being that we started with. Put yourself in the flow of that. And with as much compassion and tenderness as you can muster, we're going to offer ourselves this loving kindness prayer. Really holding it sincerely for yourself. May I be held in loving kindness. May I be happy and safe. May 
I be healthy in body and mind? May I always have enough? May my heart know peace. And just take a breath. And let this be your intention as you move through your life this week to connect with your own goodness, to see it in others, and to hold yourself genuinely in a place that allows you to feel loving kindness. to begin to drop the judgments, the restrictions, the anger, the resentment, whatever it is, to really offer yourself love. And we can do this for each other, we can do this for our world, and so together let's just hold people that we may not know, but that we see, that we know are suffering. People that we may pass who are experiencing homelessness, people who are in the depths of mental illness or addiction, people who are living in unsafe places. We hold our intention for them. That may they be held in loving kindness. May they be happy and safe. May they be healthy in body and mind. May they always have enough. May their heart know peace. And so just breathe in to that opening that connects us all to the depth of our being that we do indeed belong to each other, we belong to all of life. And as we tune into that, we begin to see the goodness in ourselves and others. And we take time in the stillness together on Sundays and any time in our life to connect with that inner gold, with our divine nature. Thank you for tuning in today. We hope that you found something meaningful in our service. If you'd like to learn more about us or make a donation in support of what we do here, visit unitydenver.org. Our Sunday service is at 10 a.m. every Sunday. We hope to see you sometime in person.